Thanks for coming on the News Hour. Now, if you, you really wanted to highlight one of Trump's new cabinet picks as someone the world should take note of, who would that be and why? Well, I think the most uh, amazing and extraordinarily good appointment is Tulsi Gabbard. Okay. Uh, Tulsi is uh, an extraordinary thinker. She's an extraordinarily accomplished woman. She is a longtime military veteran. She is, I believe, a lieutenant colonel. She is a decorated war hero. She was a decorated congresswoman. And the most important thing about Tulsi is she used to be a Democrat. Now, I think she's still a Democrat, but she's really a Republican. But she's a free thinker. And that's what defines this group. Notwithstanding what the mainstream media, the virulently anti-Trump media is saying, that, oh, he's got a bunch of acolytes, he's got a bunch of his own people, which, of course, is what Joe Biden did and what every other president did. And I submit that was one of the problems with the first Trump presidency. He didn't get his own people. He didn't sweep all of the other people out of office, the Obama people, which everyone does. But Tulsi is a voice of extraordinary reason. She's a very fine constitutionalist. I've worked with her on numerous occasions. She is a remarkable woman. And I think the world will see how remarkable she is. Well, she's a woman, but she's also a Hindu. And so she is a, someone that represents a broad range of interests. And she is just an extraordinary pick. I, I, I am so I'm overjoyed that 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 President Trump has chosen Tulsi for this role. All right. Great stuff. And, and overall, what do you make of this new cabinet? I mean, some people have been saying there's perhaps a lack of deep political experience or West Wing experience, if you like. But I was thinking maybe with control of both houses, that ability to navigate the system, does it matter quite as much? I don't think it does. I, I think it's the executive branch. The executive branch decides these issues. Congress makes law. The executive pr branch makes policy and the judiciary reviews. Um, I think this group strikes me as being, once again, very iconoclastic and very free thinking. You don't get many more free thinkers than Tulsi Gabbard, who went against the Democratic Party and Nancy Pelosi, where they tried to put her in a box because she was against just rampant military spending and, 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 and foreign military war adventure. Elon Musk, if he doesn't define free thinker, I don't know who does. Vigek Ramaswamy, the same thing. I think we're seeing a lot of people that are going to bring a new view of how politics works. I don't think we need the same old West Wing people, even the same old inner beltway people. Of course, this terrifies the establishment. Now, I will say that I think Matt Gates may be somewhat problematic, and he may be problematic to get confirmed as, as attorney general. That one was a bit of a puzzlement. Yeah, I want to come back to the confirmations. But I mean, quite a lot has been said, I think, about how ineffective parts of the Biden administration have been, particularly, as you've noted, in some areas of foreign policy. Ceasefires in Gaza and Lebanon just haven't happened. Do you think Trump's team will be an improvement in those departments in particular? I think absolutely. <clears throat> the first thing is President Trump is, is, is driven to make his mark on history. He wants to be seen as the guy that ended the Gaza war. He wants to be seen as the guy that ended the Ukraine war. I think he can do both. I think he can do that by simply addressing and tackling the issue and not dithering around and avoiding the issue as the Biden administration has consistently done. I think that this Trump administration has is tasked to do some things that they're going to do. And this cabinet is going to help him do those things. As far as the approval, I think I think retaining the Republicans retaining Congress, uh, the Senate is absolutely instrumental. Again, Matt Gates has some enemies on the Republican side, but I don't see any problem in any approvals here. I don't see this. None of these none of these nominees are trying to make a social message statement. <clears throat> none of these people are chosen because of their category or their status. Or, or, or whatever their gender politics are, or whatever their sexual politics are, they are absolutely chosen because they can do the job. And I think that is extraordinarily refreshing and good for the country and so, the world. So I'm reading that into what you've said, that you do think that ultimately all of these choices will be confirmed. Is that right? Yes, except for perhaps Matt Gates. Again, he may have a problem. His personality has been a little abrasive. I think he may not. He may have a few enemies on the Republican side that will 
either delay or prohibit his appointment in the Senate. But other than that, I don't see any problems. I see this going through rapidly. I don't see any problems at all with any of these appointments. All right, we will have to wait and see though. Bruce, thank you so much for coming on the news. It was a delight to speak to you. It's great to talk to you, thank you.